Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All oh, vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw. And now, it's gone completely. Engage. And welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David. And joining me this week, we have, believe it or not, Scarecrow. Good morning. We have Stuart. Nah. We have Amy. Heyo. And we have Eugene. Hello. Um, and joining us in the chat, we have James again. Um, so, this week on the podcast, we are talking Doctor Who... We are talking. Um, wow, my brain is not working. Digimon. Digimon. And I am echoing. Why the hell am I echoing? Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, there we go. Sorry. I accidentally set up an echo. By accident. I blame Stuart. I set my live feed into the wrong fucking channel. Oh, <laughs> uh, Muppet. Yeah, shut up. Anyway, um, this week we are talking Doctor Who, the exit of Clara. Supernova, pre-show event, and the new Digimon movie, and maybe some Dragon Ball Z live action if we've got enough time. So, it's a very sort of anime-heavy week this week, but you get that. So, I think we'll kick it off with the exit of Clara from Doctor Who. So, what do we think? Uh, more, uh, more than the fact that it's long overdue, quite liked it I personally preferred the original exit she had um, the, the Christmas special the from Christ- last year yeah the Christmas special from last year where she was meant to be found sort of old effectively old and dying and then um, at the 11th hour she decided she was going to keep going so they sort of rewrote the ending ridiculously quickly and went from there I actually prefer that exit for her than, than this one but yeah what they killed her off yeah, well, they had, they sort of had to. That said, I'm still looking for another Martha Jones who just effectively says, you know what, it's been fun, later! <laughs> and walks off into the sunset. But she doesn't, she leaves, but she, Martha Jones, doesn't she come back every once in a while? Yeah, every now and again. Oh, she gets a little screen time. This time we can never have another Clara episode. Thank you! Nope. <laughs> So we have one guy that really didn't like Clara. <laughs> uh, I was like, I was of your opinion. She should have bowed out when they originally wrote her out, not yeah. stayed in for an extra half a season sort of thing, becoming an adrenaline junkie. And it's just like, it didn't, she didn't mesh properly with goddamn Capaldi. Yeah. She she did really well with Matt Smith, and she didn't necessarily do too well with Capaldi. Like over the, they they did pretty good early on, but it sort of yeah. Through through time, it sort of went to crap. Um, now for me, I thought that episode was really really interesting. I'm curious as to where they're taking it next week. I think we kind of know where it's going. Yeah, I know. Still going to be very interesting. Can we spoil it, or should we just not? Nah, let let's break the save sci-fi spoil everything rule and not spoil it for once. Right. We will definitely cover it next week after Supernova. Definitely. I'm looking forward to one thing though. Yeah. Peter Capaldi makes an excellent angry pissed doctor. Off first. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Peter Capaldi pissed off is hilarious to watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is going to be one of those epic episodes because, God, he is the one doctor you do not want pissed off. The hell with Eccleston pissed off. The hell with freaking. Tenant. Tenant pissed off. They were excellent pissed off doctors. Capaldi just has that wild man aspect. 
Yeah, it, it's those eyebrows. It really is. <laughs> it's the angry Scotsman. Don't mess with the eyebrows. Don't mess with the angry, with the uber eyebrows on the angry Scotsman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where is that coming from? A little random little buzz coming through. Anyway, apologize for that. Got a feeling I'm looking this is to see, well, because we, cause we know the first time we saw Capaldi's Doctor was the 50th, so I'm wondering, so I'm interested to see how that's going to, um, when that's going to come full circle, because that's supposedly meant to happen in the next couple of episodes. Yeah, well, it was um, very interesting. End of the last season with Missy, it was a fan did up a video where he, that's was the time, where he's like, yeah, it'd be a real surprise if... Gallifrey was where it sort of always was, and he rocked up there, and he rocked up just as all the Doctors were gathering. That would have been really cool. So. I have a theory of how it's going to happen. Oh, yeah? This may be a little far-fetched. But I think what happens is... He gets back to Gallifrey. He, um, I think, like, somehow the, the, the War Council or, or something... Um, order him to go back and and like and like the the war council knows they're gonna lose the war, so they go back. So he asks them to go back in time and save them. Yeah, and that's how he pops into the into the fiftieth. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, back again. Back again, and so is the cyclone of Amy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute it. The dogs are cracking up. <laughs> Welcome back. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... I, think the, I think the bigger question is who's going to be the new companion? Okay, here's a question. I reckon it's going to take a good two or three episodes to get a new companion. Oh, yeah. Okay, you have to choose have to an actor or actress who hasn't been a Doctor Who companion before oh, to be a Doctor Who companion. Who would you have? I was about to say, I think it's just going to be River based off the Christmas special. I doubt it. Alex has already said. Uh, Alex has already committed to a couple other shows. So, true. Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry, that... James in the chat. That that Pretty would be cool. hilarious. You yeah. know that you know that Rowan actually played the Doctor in a special, right? In a spoof. In a spoof. Yeah. yeah. It was um for one of the charity events. Yeah, and it was. Red nose. God, that was funny. If you haven't I, seen it, you've got to watch yeah, it. It's yeah, funny. It, I think that's I think that's where um Moffat got the idea of uh, of the uh, tre- of the uh, gender bend. Yeah. Um, they did since that was when we first saw saw a female doctor, and then now we have a female master. Yeah. Well, the the master got Dalek bumps, guys, which was really funny. Yeah. Do you know what'd be really funny? What? If they brought one of the old doctors back as a companion. <laughs> Yeah, the problem with that is they're all way too old for that now. No, I was being like, um... Like, oh, Tennant oh, or Smith. They could, that. Do, they could do Tennant, remember? There's that, there's that, uh... Human clone of Tennant's Doctor. Yeah, the alternate universe. Yeah, I don't think that... I think every time they do a new Doctor, especially since the end of Matt Smith era, they've sort of set up a wall with... Like, when Matt Smith started his era, they had a fairly decent... Lack of a better way of putting it wall in between the tenant stuff and his stuff. And then at the end of Matt Smith's stuff, there was a fairly decent. There was bleed over, which we didn't have between um, tenant and Matt. But uh, it wasn't as much bleed over, if you know what I mean, because the show changed hands, changed direction. Um, yeah, between tenant and Smith, you can sort of feel the show was different. And How about Hermione Granger? Hermione Granger. Oh, wow. No. <laughs> Emma Watson as a companion. I could watch that. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've yeah. got an interesting one. Natalie Dormer. Ooh. Uh, what's the, the actress who did Luna Lovegood? Oh, God. Oh, Ivana Lynch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Her as a companion. She's absolutely... She's one of the nicest people you'll ever get to meet. I know. She's spectacular. Know. The question is, how would she portray the character? Would she go the kooky route? Or would she go the... I no, I kind of want someone nice older. Th- I kind of want someone older, because it's an older Doctor. Nah, well, see, the, the, the absolute kookiness. Like, if she played Luna against Capaldi's Doctor... <laughs> God. That would be the greatest thing in the history <laughs> of greatness. Throw her out the TARDIS. 
Didn't Look mean at to do that. Look at this, Megonigo. He actually did this, Megonigo. <laughs> Dumbledore. No. <laughs> Just no, not the dumb old door. I'm gonna stop but reading no, Dumbledore. I kind of want to see an old. Like we've had a lot of young companions. We haven't had an old, older companion for a while. What I would like to see is. They, and they tried this with um, when they first brought it back, but it didn't really stick very well. And they sort of dropped it all together by the time Amy came around. But sort of a rolling roster of companions. I mean, like, sort of what they did at the end of Tenant's era, where they brought everyone back. No, no, no. Like, no, no, no. Wait, under, no, under Eccleston, oh, so he picked up like random people, people, moved them around, dropped them into other places... Okay. So, he had Rose as his dedicated companion, but yeah. he had also had rolling companions. Like yeah. Episode, to episode sort of thing. Yeah, he had the, the dude that he picked up at the museum, took to the future, got his head chopped open and put a um, chip inside his head and then dropped him off home. You got Captain Jack came and oh, went. Actually, you got I Rose great, came I, and I, went. No, no. You got Rose's boyfriend perfect, came and went. I just saw the perfect companion. Oh, God. Sarah Jane Smith's son. That'd actually be pretty good. That could work. Yeah. Um, it's uh, really... It, 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 to... it would be a really nice tribute as well. Yeah. I just... They seem to focus wow. mostly on doing female companions for the Doctor, and I don't know why, because old school was half female, half male. Yeah. I know, like Brigadier. Like, how, how many times is a Brigadier the companion? Yeah. He never was the companion. He was always no more Rose. <laughs> yeah, the major no, component right. of the episodes, or the or the the chain of episodes in that period, but he was never the companion. But he, there were a the Doctor did have about six or seven male companions. Yeah, well, right back to day one, he had the granddaughter and then the two teachers. One was male, one was female. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, yeah, it's sort of interesting to think about. And I just realised that I was going to get do a top five this week, and then I totally forgot. <laughs> 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 I have to do that next week. Top five okay, saddest moments in sci-fi. For those who are wondering, it's top five um, saddest sci-fi moments. Yeah. I'm just going to say Hayden Christensen and Star Wars the whole time. <laughs> I have to laugh what um, James has says. Jack? Jack, about... is, Jack is Malcolm Merlin. That would explain his immortality in oh. Arrow. Yeah, James just goes, there is only one. Cancellation of Firefly. <laughs> oh, come oh. on, that still hurts. We'll, we'll cover it. We'll cover it next week. Cover it next week. I know I say that a lot and forget what we're going to cover next week, but that still hurts. I do plan on doing it. Um, but no, like, I just thought of another really sad one: the the final episode of Sarah Jane Adventures, where it sort of comes up with that the adventure continues forever, and it's just like. <laughs> it's very sad. Very, very sad moment. Number two, Jar Jar Abrams. <laughs> Jar Jar... Wait! <laughs> right, wait until the next movie comes out. It's gonna be great. Anyway, um, back to something that's remotely close to the topic. Clara as a companion. Overall, what would you rate her out of ten? Seven. Seven? Yeah, I was thinking a solid seven. Seven, yeah. Wasn't the worst we had, wasn't the best we had. The worst we've had, I have to admit, so far, is still the pond. Amy and Rory. <laughs> because, oh, damn it, it's I'm Doctor so Who, not the not Amy and... She would rip my head off for, say, for agreeing to that. Yeah. It's, not the, it's not the River and... It's the Amy and Rory show. It's Doctor Goddamn Who. I mean, come on, the Doctor became a side story to the love triangle love tri going on. <laughs> EJ's on? EJ's on? EJ. EJ is in, he's uh, not in the EJ. call. I just flashed up going online. Okay. <coughs> so yeah. Anyway, um and there's already I've already um there's already some interesting um t uh things that have come out um that people are starting to point out with um the still for the next episode, which I'll bring up in the news. All right, sweet. We'll co yeah, we'll cover that in the news a little bit later. Are I like they... that comment. That the doctor should not be in a love triangle. Yeah, <laughs> especially with humans that are effectively dogs compared to him. Wolf. Wolf, wolf, motherfucker. 
Because, yeah, we don't live very long for him. Missy and when is he the... dies, he regenerates. Missy as a companion. Wow. There I were... see that ending really badly. There were talks of that going to be happening this season. If, yeah. uh, if, if like, if Jenna didn't re-sign, they were going to make that happen for this season. That's a bad thing. There's I'm glad way they did. Uh, too much history between those two. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't. Okay, um, let's move on to the Digimon movie. Four part up. Yeah. It was over in Japan. It was released as one thing, and the, and then when it was broadcast online, they split it up into four parts. As far as I know, there's another. There's more coming. Yeah, yeah. next year, March next year. This when there's, there's more coming. Or, there's another two or three components to it to come yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, basically, the this movie follows on from the original Digidestin, the original guys. It follows <laughs> on from season two. Yeah, so yeah. this is set three years after season two. Yeah, so effectively after, I think it was the Egg Digivolution series, wasn't it? No, 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 uh, season two was um, season two DNA, was DNA, DNA was and Armor Evolution. Armor Evolution, the Egg Evolution. Is yeah, the, Egg Evolution, but, yeah. Armor oh, Evolution yeah. and DNA James doesn't know what Digimon is. Yeah, Digimon is an animated it. series, sort of Get like the hell out of our channel. Sort of like a Tamagotchi type thing. Yeah, um, it was originally released back in the nineties. I want to say. Yeah. yeah, it was a direct rival to Pokemon. Yeah, it had a better storyline and doesn't use the same character who constantly deages himself by some weird. Yeah, we've already established long ago that Ash is actually a Time Lord. Okay. Yeah, true. It's the only explanation. It is really the only explanation, and we never we never meet his dad. So the dad, his dad, could be the doctor for all we know. That'd explain a hell of a lot. That we the Pikachu would be one too. Yeah, now Pikachu's like level nine hundred and thirty now. Someone did the math on all the different battles that are done and <laughs> yeah. worked out the XP. I was like, what the shit? It'd probably be a lot higher than that, truthfully. Yeah, but anyway, um, back back on topic of Digimon. So, this movie picks up, um, and in the first episode, you see the other Digidestined kids get wrecked by something. Yeah. Um, that was really started, dark. That, yeah, I saw it, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I, like, I was watching going, this is not the Digimon I remember. <laughs> yeah, all um, the Digidestines get attacked by something. Just get, get, get uh, destroyed. Only two of the second gen... That were left was TK and Kari. Yeah, but they were also from the first gen. Yeah. So it's effectively all the second gen of Digidestin got wiped out, leaving just the first gen remaining. They so didn't your so basically the aftermath of season two, the half-assed ending they tossed in, has now officially been thrown out the window. Yeah. Thank God. And the Digimon movie, that was really fucking bad, is now officially canon. Yep. Because of Omnimon. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. that's because that's a thing. Or as they, or as they call it in America, Omegamon. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. America, Omnimon Japan. was the American one. Omegamon was the Japan one. Japan, yeah. yeah. I can safely say Alphamon was very badass, though. Oh, oh like, yeah. Do you know how that how um he was created? Yeah. Okay. I know how he was created. It's like, he's still appropriately badass. Oh, fuck yes. I've only ever seen one other, um... Was it? Um, Digimon anime with him involved. And yeah. it was absolutely epic. And the only thing that could st stand up to him was a cor semi-corrupted Gallantmon Crimson mode. Wow. <laughs> that was the only thing that had enough power, and that was throwing... Uh, Ren uh, James versus a James, real quick. Random Babylon Five reference is random, and yes, it does compare to how bad Susan Ivanova is. Like <laughs> this thing is as overpowered as Super Saiyan Goku compared okay. to Krillin. It's just <laughs> no. it's not even a contest anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, this isn't actually, Super Saiyan no. Goku compared to Krillin. This is Super Saiyan Goku compared to Yajirobe. No, compared to Yamcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, Yamcha outdoes Yajirobe, sorry. No, it is Yamcha. Yamcha gets Yamcha all the time. Yeah, but Yajirobe well, can't uh, even would it be, uh, 
Super Saiyan Goku against um, Hercules. Hercule. Mr. Saiyan. Oh, oh like, God. That's wait, making me wait, think wait, of Dragon Ball Super. Now I'm feeling depressed. <laughs> Why? Imagine Super Saiyan Hercule. Okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> Why? Why is Dragon Ball Super? Why? <laughs> Oh, that was one of those what the hell am I watching moments. Oh, yeah, back to Digimon. Um, yeah, back to Digimon. Overall, and this is someone who who has watched the English and all the Japanese, so I know the different themes and everything. It brought me back to being, like, it made me feel like a 10-year-old. The first episode, I'll admit, was slow, but it was the intro into everything. Yeah. Like, it shows where they all are and stuff. The fight, the fight scenes when they Digivolve, though. I, I love I, I love the new Digivolve sequence. Like I prefer the old one. Don't get me wrong, but the new one's Digi- pretty cool as well. The new one's really cool. You are but like they turn it to a, a Zoid core. Yep, they turn it to Zoid cores, and <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's a win. You win. You win by default. <laughs> I, I love that we get to hear that Japanese that that Japanese um theme uh, Digivolve theme again. Yeah. They oh yeah. Did have good digi- dun, dun. Uh, Digivolve themes for the Japanese ones. Yeah. Oh, I, as soon as I heard it, goosebumps. Uh, I wasn't sure if they were going to use the original, and then I heard it. It's just goosebumps the, up my entire arm. Have you heard the evolution theme for Tamers? Yeah, I have. God, I love that one in the Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Is, I'm wondering. Um, well, this is my major question: is if they do an English adaptation, if they're going to use the original season one. Uh, theme again. I'd I'd assume they will be using the original Digimon oh, for that nostalgia. one. Nostalgia. <laughs> but hey, yeah, oh, yeah. watching those episodes has actually made me go back and watch the original show. Yeah, I know. That's that, like, I think that's the idea of it. Is like it's made to remind you of what of what a, uh, that period of the of the '90s was, was such amazing anime. Exactly, and why the current anime that sort of survived from them is such horse crap compared to it. There was a lot, there's still a lot of good anime. Um, probably one of the more notable ones that have really picked up lately is uh, One Punch Man. Oh yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with that. I mean, the anime that has survived from them, like Pokemon, Digimon, oh, yeah, like Yu-Gi-Oh, that generation, yeah. that generation of anime yeah, like, that has survived right through to now still is still going. Has well, the the sort of the, the ones that have survived through now have just become episodic and what's the word I'm trying to think of? Sort of formulaic, formulaic. That's what I'm trying to think of. Okay. It's, Repetitive. Pretty much, you could watch any episode, and all they've done is done the same story with three different characters, and they just sort of roll the dice, and it's just effectively the same story over and over and over and over and over. Which my, is um, which is why the old stuff's really good. Yeah, my interesting thing with the new Digimon is the new Digi Destined Girl. Yeah. What her role is going to play, and what does her Digimon Digi evolve to? Because it already looks evil as it is. Yeah, and it did have that sort of force fieldy, glowy thing, so I suspect sh- that Digimon's been infected with that evil Digimon virus. Well, they did, remember they did show you that egg getting made and yeah, that little black dot falling into it. So, so I wonder if that was that egg. I wonder if that was it then. Yeah. That said, watching um, the when Agumon and oh, I forgot the other one. I'm just gonna go with I'm gonna go with Greymon. I'm gonna go. Yeah, Gabamon. They did the transformation up to Omnimon. That was oh, like God. wow. A- yeah, attack, was Digivolve. Cool. Attack, Digivolve. Attack, Digivolve. Like wow. That this is getting cool. awesome. And then the DNA sequence they pulled off. Yeah. I I'll admit I'm a little sad. Like we didn't get to see like the individual evolution themes. But I'm hear them again. But I'm glad they that didn't. That being said, that was amazing. That yeah. was really really well done. To be perfectly honest, I was surprised Greymon didn't go to, um, what, Metal Greymon? Or what? No, he did go to Metal Greymon. No, 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 I mean in the first battle when it's up against three guys. Oh, yeah. I was surprised it didn't sort of go well, that I, extra step. Question, if it went if it went to Ultimate, it could have just gone, Poof. Well, that was my Whoops. theory when I when I first heard it was, can they actually go up to their other levels? And yeah. Clearly that was proven, but I think No, Ty was, that's the thing, they can't. I think Ty was holding back. Yeah. No. Look, guys, there's one thing we've got to take into account. The crests were destroyed? The yeah. crests are destroyed. They've lost their access to the higher levels. Ty and Matt have a sort of a loop around because of, is, they shouldn't have been able to reach their ultimate levels. Technically, they can reach their mega form because it mm. skips over all of that and it doesn't rely on the crest. Yeah, yeah so they digital. got a huge evolution. internal power. They got a huge internal power boost when they first unlocked the mega level. Yeah. 
Vector and but... Myotis one error. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, oh, sorry, Myotis one error. Yeah, but when they got shot by the arrows of light and hope. Yeah. Don't, uh, yeah. don't forget, um, Angemon is effectively ultimate level. There's <laughs> some, some, Patamon is so broken. It's His champion level is, a, is almost a sort of 0.9 at ultimate level, and his ultimate level is like 0.9 at mega level. It's just yeah, broken right. as dicks. <laughs> his mega level is just oh god. Yeah, it's just, mega level is on the same level as Omnimon. Yeah, it's just hilariously broken. But at the same time, he's like Broly, but good. It's meant to be because his evolution pattern is so boned anyway. He's spent yeah. so much time when everyone else has got access to the next level before he accesses it. I mean, come on, he didn't reach his ultimate level. Until well and truly after Ty and Matt had reached Mega. 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 Yeah, he got like the last five episodes, I think, of like season one. So. Oh, yeah. Didn't Kari have the same issue? No, no. she got her straight Andrew, away. Andrew Woman came in real early. Andrew Woman is a stock standard ultimate level. Yeah. Which is and really like, odd if you think about it, but anyway. Uh, not really, because. has two yeah. Mega levels. No, no. They haven't confirmed which one is the true one. That little Don Chonky movie. I dis I discount the um the whole part three of the original of the of the movie because of one thing. You have two Digimon that can reach that can reach the mega level. Why the ass are you dicking around with golden Digi eggs when you've got two megas right there that can just go fuck you, boom. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair point. It's a kid show. Yeah. And TK and Kari are never meant to have that. But I really feel that the ne in the next two or three movies, the next two or three parts of this, the others are going to have to find some way to get to the higher levels. Maybe even reach the mega levels themselves. Yeah. Because it seems wrong that all the, all the original DDs can do is access their champion forms Except for when Ty and Matt get really ups get really irked, they can just skip straight to the to the mega to form a mega yeah. one. It's like basically yeah. they just go Super Saiyan. And... and for once, Matt wasn't a dick. No, <laughs> Ty was the dick. dick. I was like, but, the fuck. But see, the thing was, Ty was understandably a dick. You got to remember that because he saw all the damage and saw what was going on. Yeah. But so he, he Matt's got character traditionally is a dick. Dick. Yeah. He is the ultimate. Dick yeah, but see, the but see, they've grown up and they've aged and they've matured. The difference is, I think Ty as a character has matured further than the others, because he's genuinely concerned about the damage he's causing and whether the cost of the damage is outweighs the sort of the stopping of the damage. If you know what I mean. Adding yeah. more damage to stop it. Yeah, yeah. Does and, um, does breaking A prevent and preventing B from being broken worth the cost of breaking A? Is effectively the way he looked at it. And when you look at what happened to that street and what happened to the airport, I think that's actually a fairly good point to be concerned about. And I was I was actually sort of surprised that from Ty's point of view, he was actually in the right, and he was in a lot of respects. He was looking at it going. Okay, these guys are messing up this stuff, and to be and I don't want to break any more stuff. I don't want to be sort of responsible for destroying all these lives. But at the same time, can I? Um, if we work together, we can stop it. But it's going to break more things. Is that worth it? And Matt turning around and effect effectively saying, "Look, screw the damage we're going to do. We've, we're stopping this thing now." could be viewed from that point of view as a dickish position because he doesn't care what gets in his way he doesn't care how much damage he causes to prevent the long term damage and it's sort of a cost versus gain sort of analysis and I think Ty as a more mature character is capable of making that analysis better than the younger characters and I also think that's why um, what's his face, the other guy who was doing all the studying whose name I can't Joe. think of, Joe didn't get involved because he's so failing? No, apart from the fact that he's failing everything. <laughs> yeah, but he's always failing everything. Yeah. So. Okay, yeah. I, got, I, I got. While we we're on the part of Joe, <laughs> did anyone else, when, he's, when Joe says, I have a girlfriend, go, eh? 
Well, I was, to be perfectly My honest... My first reaction was exactly the same as um, Izzy and Mimi. It's like, yeah. is this person real? Yeah. So <laughs> no, you... that was TK. Yeah. Yeah, I'm along the same lines. <laughs> I, love, I, love, I, I, I love. I was like, are they real? I, I love it how he's he's yelling. Um, they're, they're yelling at each other, have this big massive fight, and yeah, Izzy's he's just talking. in the background, to, on the background, just talking, just totally oblivious. And then Joe's like, I, I don't want to do this because I have a girlfriend. And then he stop, and that's what makes him stop. <laughs> <laughs> had, sorry, I had to bring that up because that was too funny, not too. And yeah, to be honest, did anyone else notice? Um, the two younger brother and sister, because they were always fairly close. TK and Kari. TK and yeah. Kari. How the dynamic has completely changed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love what I love uh, Kari's still pretty much what she was, but TK has turned into the turned Leia. into Matt and is a complete and total man whore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Kari. She's like, she's like, you got another date? Have you? Eh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> and like, at a couple of points like, where he half. Kari, please. A couple of points when he, I wouldn't say hit on her, but sort of made comments along those lines, and she sort of blushed and shied away from it. It's like, yeah, we know yeah, what's yeah. going on here. Still they're still pushing the old TK Kari well, shtick. Well, they're, they're yeah. pushing Izzy likes Mimi. That was pretty funny. That was hilarious. <laughs> hey, it, was, it was either Izzy with Mimi or Joe with Mimi. Yeah, and Mimi being oblivious of the whole scenario. Actually, I want to. Um, now that Joe's bowed out of the competition, then he's going to focus on his. I do want to um, notice something as uh, uh, note something as well. Uh, back to the Digivolutions, TK's Digivice. Mm -hmm. It's still the um, it's still the T two. Yeah, it's still. And so it's was Kari's. They they still have their D threes. Threes, yeah. Digivice doesn't evolve back. So I wonder if that's going to play into something later on with the other, um, yeah. season two Digi Destined out of out of the picture. I yeah, so they, I'm, I'm curious as to what actually that, happened to them. Let me show that screen that had the listing of all the Digi Destined on it. Yeah. The, those four, Ken, Davis, Yoli, and Cody, or Yori. Yeah. Weren't there. No, they were there. They oh, no, were, yeah, they were. They were in red with K over their image. I think they're killed. That'd be they're dead. That'd be a pretty big thing to do. To... That'd be dark as, dark as. Yeah, I, I have a feeling this is this is not going to be the digital one we remember as kids. I feel like no. this is going to be a very dark. This is going to turn very dark very quickly. I've seen some really really dark Digimon yeah. stuff. I mean, oh, Digimon a, is a the whole dark the whole series. start of the of season two of the whole Digimon Emperor making Digimon the slaves like that was really dark. Oh yeah. Like no, this... it wasn't actually compared to some of the other well, they have stuff a... I've seen. No, nah, that has was... been a lot as well. I mm. also I also did something crazy. I tracked down the mangas. Oh, oh god, oh, oh, oh. Okay, now I know where you're going. Oh god, <laughs> I'm not sure if you I've actually read, ever read, read it, the... but oh no, I've read the mangas. The V Tamer one. Oh yeah. <laughs> now that got fucking dark. Now. Also, what I'm thinking is, you know how we were talking about Ty being way more mature than than the rest of them? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, what if this unlocks an alternate evolution sequence for him? Hmm. Because, don't forget, they've been stuck with the evolution sequence they've got. And there's been evidence through other series that the evolution sequence can be different. Well, they did have, early on, when um, Ty went nuts at Matt, and Greymon have digivolved in a skull Greymon and went nuts. Yeah. We've so also got, there is evidence uh, that there is alternate sort of paths that he could take. There's... But Agumon. Just going off the base evolutions that Agumon has, the most common ones. Oh, jeez, he has so many. <laughs> no, 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 his most, his most common ones are... Oh, most basic, so Greymon and such. Greymon, Tyrannomon, and Vidramon are the three most common. Yeah. But Vidramon, um, in the anime canon, was linked directly to Vimon. No, he wasn't. So... X-Vimon was linked directly to Vimon. Oh, that's right. Vidramon he reached... hasn't been seen yet. Yeah. The only... We haven't even seen anything of Vidramon. So... The thing is, that I know about, remember about Vidramon, is his attacks, while he's still the same size as Greymon, 
his attack right. is a lot more accurate and controllable. Yeah. So what if through the maturing process they they get well in the next episode sort of thing they wind up with new digi devices again and it unlocks an alternative evolution sequence. It, uh, uh, yeah, it would be interesting if their digi devices did transform if they if they keep the original design. I yeah. kind of think they're going to keep the original design based off the fact that back in July they released an anniversary digivice that was linked to the new series. Yeah, yeah and it was only like a zillion dollars each. I wouldn't be surprised if there is an alternate, though. Yeah. If they do Probably wind up with alternate evolutions. Because Toei wants to make money. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but the original evolutions were also forced upon them by the crests. Yeah. So if you've got an alternate there, then it could go... I just want the card swipe ones back. Yeah, we're not going to get them. <laughs> uh, quick, use the blue one! <laughs> okay, oh. can we finish with this topic? We're gonna yeah. Okay, o- overall, ratings. Because we've got to move on, we've got to get onto the model kits very soon. So, out of ten, what would you rate this, the first part of probably many? I'm going to give it a solid eight. I'm going to go with seven, only because I felt it was a bit slow. The fights were good. The animation style is a million, million, million times better than Dragon Ball Super. Like, they're not even on the same level Level. of animation style. The animation style is spectacular. Um, Agamon's a bit lighter. (laughs) I did notice the colour differential a bit. Yeah. Uh, That's also to draw draw more difference between the original Agamon to the new Agamon one. in uh, not the new one. Oh the um the one in um the um the in Savers. The Data Squad. Yeah. yeah. Savers. Yeah. Because he's a bit of a darker orange in that one than yeah. even the base on the base Agamon. Yeah. Which again shows that the alternate evolution sequence there, the Rise Greymon evolution sequence. So yeah. that uh, is another option that there is, but I don't think they're gonna use that one for Ty. Yeah. Um, okay, so James just said he only just got a notification that the broadcast is starting. <laughs> 40 minutes in. Well, okay, anyway, so, yeah, seven, eight overall, definitely worth watching. Can't wait to sort of get back to it. I don't um, really re-watch the originals. Yeah, so do I. Assuming it doesn't drive me insane, which it will. Because it's a kid's show. Mm. And it did not age well. Anyway. You'd be surprised, actually. Season and... 1 did age well. Season 2, not so well. Yeah. So, anyway, let's move on to the model kits. Eugene, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, what do you um, got for us this week? This week, I'm going to do a, re- a review of. The round two reissues of Space 1999. Um, Round two reissued the old Fun Dimensions Space 1999 kits. Uh, Two of them are straight out reissues. That's the old Eagle Lander. Uh, No real changes on that kit. The interesting one they reissued was the alien moon buggy that kit hasn't been seen in mm, 20 30 years so it's an interesting ad if you haven't seen it in a while now both of those kits if you can get your hands on the initial releases you have a chance of getting one of 100 autograph cards i do know the eagle i they're now issuing it with it still has the card in it, but it no longer has the autographs. Uh, the Eagle card you could get with um, uh, the pilot of the Eagle. Um, was that Paul? or? I can't remember. It's been so long since I, I've watched that stuff. Okay. okay, well, I know it's the one, one pilot you can get his autograph, and the alien moon buggy you can get with Catherine Schnell's autograph. Catherine Schell, 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 you can get it with her autograph. The then there were two additional reissue, two additional uh, reissues that were modified. The 
Moonbase Alpha itself, they reissued and they made a lot of improvements to this kit. They, for starters, the base will no longer accommodate the oversized um, main mission. That now sets separately because the base itself now is a four-piece vacuform arm base. And there are two sprues of new parts. The new parts are five landing pads with the docking arms and uh, a half a dozen correct sized eagles. So the eagles are much smaller than they were in the original release. Now, if you really want to build up your diorama, it does include the oversized eagles and the original three e landing pads, but the new ones have different detail on them. Also, the, um, the travel tubes are now separate parts for better detail. Then, the other one they modified is the Eagle Lander, they came out with a deluxe version, which is a multimedia kit that they added the a resin science pod, and they also added booster engines and, and some other stuff. That, but if that's not enough, um, round two has announced a one half photo or one half filming scale Space 1999 Eagle. This will be a 22 inch model kit. And it is, they have taken the time to make this thing very accurate. Uh, it, it will have hundreds of pieces in the box. It is a super detailed kit. Um, I'll provide links to, um, to the Round 2 website, which shows. Oh, some of the, the pictures and stuff that they've been working on for this kit, but it looks fantastic. Sweet. And all that stuff will be posted up onto facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast. So, yep. And that'll be posted up fairly soon. And just a quick update, Pirate's Cove, the Star Trek novel, has reached its um, goal of $4,085. So Sweet. anybody, anybody that wants to back that like Star Trek books, this has 43 hours to go. You'll get the book plus three Star Trek patches, the Pegasus, the Sovereign Development, and Starfleet Command, along with a uh, 11 by 17 poster of the Enterprise E. And uh, Star Trek Renegade still has, uh, let's see, it looks... Looks like about a hundred and forty-five thousand dollars to go. They did add uh, more com badges because that seems to be what people are interested in. Oh yeah, you should. Oh, yeah. The, the shops at Supernova that have the com badges, they they sell out like immediately. Yep. Yeah, they've got those available, and they've added a number of other goals for people. Now that's only got nine days to go. And they're still looking for another hundred and forty-five thousand. Yeah, James just said really quickly. Speaking of enterprises, my favorite was the Ambassador, the Enterprise C, and then Galaxy. Mine personally is the Enterprise E. I just think it looks sleeker and nicer. And I if you put really flame put flames down the side of it, that thing could be a hot rod. I like the Enterprise E design as well. It doesn't look like it's a cat's wet dream. Yeah. So yes. Anyway, sorry for interrupting you, Eugene. That's all right. But the model kits are brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Find us on fa find me on Facebook and at PerryCountyHobbies.com. Sweet, cool. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Let's do it. Let's do the news, and then we'll do Supernova right at the very end. Yep. And uh, I'm gonna start some Jessica uh, Jones news. It so, was released, and it's spectacular. Yes. <laughs> That's all you need uh, to know. <laughs> That's. <laughs> no, uh, tease actually came from the Jessica Jones Twitter. Hmm. And um, it sh it's an overhead shot of her desk, and it has a Nelson and Murdoch business card on it. Ooh! For those who don't know, that is referencing Daredevil. Yes, that's a setup for their new multi-universe show they're working on. Well, sorry, multi-series show. Their equivalent of Avengers. Yep. 
So that is a, a slowly, all oh, that's slowly starting to uh, get uh, is starting to attack. I've really got to get a silent chair. Every time I sit down in this thing, it creaks. <laughs> it's like so bad. Yeah. Uh, this is cool. Uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow trailer is released online. Nice. So this uh, this actually shows the actor playing Vandal Savage. Nice uh, uh, live action portrayal. Nice. And uh, shows a lot of diff um, shows different things. Uh, hat does have the new Firestorm, so it does have um, Jefferson in it. And he's got a new outfit. Sweet. It's more of the um, traditional fire storm, so the the red and the and the uh, yellow and stuff. Cool. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is this uh, and it, uh, for fans of The Walking Dead, Glenn is alive. <laughs> Thanks, IMDb. <laughs> that was funny. That was so funny. Yep. So. Those who don't know what I'm talking about, IMDb was updated to have Glenn in one of the future episodes, and the fans around the internet's heads exploded. <laughs> yeah, basically they we went they went oops we didn't we weren't meant to do that. Yeah, whoopsie. Did you hear? Um, I'll just really quickly on the note of Jessica Jones before I forget. Um, did you hear about the fans complaining about Tenet? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. My my um, one of my cosplay friends um um. Eve, uh, Eve Beauregard, you probably... Yeah, know I she's... remember Eve. Yeah, um, she pulled up on Twitter, Tumblr is not ready for David Tennant as, as Kilgrave. I'm like, no, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr is so not ready. Oh, poor Tumblr. God, that yeah. was funny. Seriously, have a look at... Google that and have a look at what people <laughs> were saying about Evil Tennant. I thought it did spectacular. We're going to do the full review probably next week, once we've all seen it. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, it's amazing. So it's good. Marvel Netflix hit it, had it out the park. Oh yeah. So go, going to they're finally giving Arrow and Flash a decent sort of challenge. Arrow and Flash, uh, they they control TV right now. They're better that, than better than Shield. Thank you for reminding me of that. Actually, next week is the crossover is the start of the crossovers. Is the oh, crossovers nice. for um, Flash and Arrow. Oh nice. Because I was watching. I'm looking forward to that. I yeah. was watching the um the. DC Legends of, of, of Tomorrow trailer and, they, and it said at the end of it uh, next week December 1st Flash and Arrow crossover I'm like oh shit we're up to there already so yeah um yeah, yeah. so yeah quick mention of that um and this makes me really happy Vin Diesel is bringing back Riddick with a new movie and TV show yeah didn't that get some hate as well did you see in the comments for that yeah I see I love the Riddick yeah I enjoyed Riddick but I think it's going to be really hard to translate translate that to a TV show. Because a lot of what Riddick is, is Vin Diesel. And without Vin Diesel, it's going to be really sort of intriguing how they play it. Well, I like how, they, how they're how they doing the TV show. They're focusing on the, um, on the mercs of, of the universe. Yeah. So, that's going to be really cool. Oh, they want to redo MacGyver. They want to redo Lost in Space. Which brings me to our next story. <laughs> Oh god. Worst segue ever. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Netflix wants to do a re wants to do a uh, a uh, remake of Lost in Space. Yeah. See Lost in Space is another one of those sort of sci-fi series that's lightning in a bottle. It was perfect for when it was made, but you're going to be really really hard to translate that to modern audiences in a new and intriguing way, because back then, it's like MacGyver, back then it was sort of the first to do that sort of thing. And now, everyone else is doing it. So, doing a Lost in Space movie, it's, yeah. Well, Lost in Space, they tried, you know, they did the cartoon series, that la that had a pilot, and that was it. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Then they had another pilot that went nowhere, and those sets got used as the bridge of the Battlestar Pegasus, and then they did wait, the wait, wait, stop, back up. Really? You can look it up. There is a there's an unaired Lost in Space pilot out there. Sweet. Uh, I'll have to search that and, down. And I, I meant I meant as I meant as the sets as for, for Pegasus, because I love the Pegasus yeah. sets. That's where they came from. Ah, nice. And and then you had the live action movie with uh, Gary Oldman and Heather Graham and them. Yeah. And and that one that 
you know, it ends in a cliffhanger and they never bother answering it either. No. So I think you're right. It it was lightning in a bottle and I don't think there's gonna be a I don't think there's gonna be a lot they can do with it. Yeah. So anyway, uh Stuart, keep going, news. Yep. Uh Doctor Who. Now I did mention that there were a few things with uh Doctor Who. Um, with with the still for the next episode. Uh, one of them is that he's on a he's being followed by a camera. There's a there's a screen behind him that that's following him. Oh, sort of a video feed of him on on a TV screen, so like a security feed and stuff. So he's clearly being watched. And there's also a person in a robe, and he knows who it is, but you can't see who it is. So. I think that's I think that's kind of hit that that could be River and that's gonna might be a setup for um Christmas special. That would be very interesting. Yeah, there is a full trailer up for um Heaven Sent, which is the next episode. Yeah, Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> no, no, there, there is no such thing as Anakin Skywalker. Now this is uh interesting. This popped up yesterday on um my newsfeed. I don't know if you've seen it, but um Chris Hemsworth does not look like Thor anymore. No. He um he had to lose a absolute crap ton of weight and muscle for his new film In the Heart of Sea and he's just he looks um like he's got like lath- he looks old, he's got like raggedy beard and hair and makeup and stuff like it. It's really he's, different. He's also in the Hunter. Uh Hunter or Huntress, whatever. Yeah. He's in a lot of shows at the moment. Yeah, yeah but he just, he doesn't look like his... He doesn't look like Thor. Thor, yeah. Oh yeah, speaking of Thor really quick, you hear that they're doing extra casting on the Gold Coast soon? Would you guys be up for that? Because I sure as hell am. I was wondering when they were going to do it, I just wasn't sure when it was. Um, not, we don't have a date yet, but as soon as I know the company I'll let you guys know. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, anyway, is that the news? Uh, that, I would... I think I've got everything major. I mean, there's obviously more Star Wars stuff, but I'm trying to get trying to not cover everything Star Wars. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is actually I'm, there is one thing I want to mention. Uh, Disney and Google are doing something really cool. Yeah. You can uh, with Google, you can either just choose the dark side or the light side, and your Google apps will be um, altered to reflect this choice. Oh God. <laughs> Disney, why? <laughs> um, it's Disney. Yeah, I know. The only, the only piece of Star Wars news that I read recently, which is worth sort of mentioning, is that based on current Disney plans, we will not be alive long enough to see the end of the Star Wars story. Yeah, that, yeah they, they plan to just pump out Star Wars yeah, films they, every year. Every year. Until they, <laughs> until they just run out of money or don't care. I suspect the don't care will happen first. Okay. It just depends on how long the don't care will happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's move on to... Supernova. Supernova. We've got about five minutes left to cover it, so plenty of time. So, this is the first Supernova that hasn't had cancelled guests. No! <laughs> shit, it hasn't! Holy <laughs> crap in heaven. That's That's that hasn't happened don't, in a long time. Uh, don't yeah. jinx us yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's a, they already did the... Isn't Adelaide last weekend? Yeah, Adelaide was last weekend, so... We're three days out, don't jinx it. Yeah. Um, oh, we've had people cancel on the day. Yeah, fair point. Um, but well, yeah... It's also meant to be horrendous as well, by the way. Yeah. It's meant to be pouring with rain at 30 degrees. Oh, it, it gets better, guys. There's better be storming on Sunday. I it's... hope not, because that's when I'm energetic here. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got photo shoots lined up. Have fun with that. Inside. Ladies. Okay. Yeah, go. You, babe. Um, <laughs> it's better. There is no bringing of food or water or any liquid or food out into the convention hall. You can only have in there what you buy in there. Wait, what? What? Bridget when did they Convention add Entertainment that? Center. The they've just really added. Well, it's been there for a while, but they've really just stomped down on it, courtesy of Comic Con and everyone. Just bringing, going out, getting their food, and bringing it back in there. They've really decided to stop That's down on it to the point of checking cosplayers. Let's put it this way: I'm work, working with the 105th there. They, the convention entertainment center, have said you guys are not allowed to bring an esky with drinks in. 
to what? keep in your store. I'm gonna die. What? So, they've, they've got two chance in hell of stopping me from bringing stuff in from outside. Uh, they will. They'll tell you to top. They'll either. I'll just I'll pour it on the fucking ground right in front of them. <laughs> yeah, they'll make you do it. They'll make you get rid of it. Then and there, honestly. Uh, pour, pour it on them. It's a dick move that they've done, but apparently there's going to be um, cheaper drinks and stuff available through the. Oh, bullshit! Bullshit! Domino's charges fucking fifteen bucks for like one slice of pizza. There is I no way they're charging less if you can't bring it in from outside. I'm saying a drink. Even because still, you know how much it is in the, at the uh, conventions. Like ten bucks for a glass of water. Ten bucks for a five hundred ml bottle of water. Yeah. Or five bucks for a five hundred ml bottle of water. So fuck that noise. Yeah. See, Honestly, that is why my car is in the car park. I'm just going to leave my stuff in the boot and go down there whenever I need to. That is probably the smartest option you can take. Yeah. Which is what I normally do anyway. Normally I have a bottle of water on my backpack and that was it. And if they ask me, oh, I bought it in there. I've just brought it out with me. I'm just going back in. If they genuinely try and stop me from bringing a bottle of water in, I will guarantee someone will pass out from heat stroke. I can guarantee probably me. <laughs> so... Anyway, 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 let's move on to guess instead of just. God, right. that is so fucking frustrating. So, God, oh, greedy fucking. Anyway, okay. they've just turned the best con into the biggest smoldering pile of crap ever. Sorry, okay, moving on. Moving on, I'm moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got Neville Longbottom. We've got Nick Frost from Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Adventures of Tintin. I'm looking forward to meeting him. He's going to be great. Uh, Matthew Lewis, a.k.a. Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter. Barbara Eden from I Dream of Jeannie. Yeah, she's getting old. Yeah, but if she, year but, anniversary? Yeah, but if she's selling the, the vase things and signing them like she was last time she was over here, I'm probably going to get one. <laughs> Just because. Um, you got Barbara F uh, Felden from Get Smart. Agent she's Agent 99 in Get Smart, which is pretty cool. Actually, I know something interesting with uh, Barbara Eden. Yeah? She's cheaper this year. She is? Uh, I'm leaving that one alone. <laughs> okay. She's cheaper you dirty for photos, bastards. Uh, photos and autographs. Maybe she didn't get that many last time and she realised that it was a very bad move. Because she has like $100 for a photo with her. Wow. She's 60 now. So... Peter Mayhew, a.k.a. Chewbacca. Let's do it. Never do that again. <laughs> Hopefully he won't get his uh, cane taken away when he comes back through uh, the... Security. security. Yeah. <laughs> um, Summer Glau is going to be there. She's cancelled last time. Uh, I think last time she was coming over was back when we were at the RNA. I think it was the last time oh, we were at the RNA. Finally, we're getting Summer Glau for once. Yeah. So that's a, it's a second trip over to Brisbane that I know of. Steph Dawson from The Hunger Games. John Hedder from Napoleon Dynamite. Michael Rosen... Rosenbaum. Yeah, that. From Smallville, Justice League, a couple other things. Matthew Nabel from Arrow, Riddick, Bikey Wars. Um, the big one for me, Christopher Judge from Stargate SG-1. And X-Men... He was in X-Men Evolution? Yeah. Huh. Must have missed that. Anyway, um, Dean, another name that I can't do justice to. Haglund? Lund? Yeah, Haglund. Haglund. Woohoo, I got it right ish. Um, from the X Files and stuff like that. Richard Carter from Mad Max Road Fury. David Yost and Karen Ashley, the blue and yellow, yellow. Power Rangers, respectively. Uh, Money More from Power Rangers. From Money More from Power Rangers. Greg Van Bo. Awesome. Borsum. Wow, my brain is not English. Uh, from Mad Max Road Fury. And Happy Feet 1 and 2. Garrison Seven's going to be there. A heap of other people. Christopher Sabat and Sean Smeal from Dragon Ball Shemmel from Dragon Ball Z. Goku and Vegeta. Basically. Goku and Vegeta. Um, Olivia Olsen from Adventure Time. And we're out of time. So I tried. I got through a lot of them. Not enough, but a lot. So yeah, so make sure you check out Supernova. Bye. Bye all. Good night. Bye. So remember, keep keep up to date on facebook.com slash save sci-fi 
or safe sci fi.com, which I update occasionally. Um, and the podcast page is facebook.com slash safe sci fi podcast. Catch you later. Podcast. Catch you later.